Hello historians, this is Mr. Fredo. An exciting moment for our class because today we actually step outside of Western Europe for the first time uh, all year, at least in terms of any type of extended study. Uh, instead of focusing on Western Europe, we are going to focus on the great empires of West Africa between around 400 CE through around 1600 CE, which interesting enough is very similar to the time period that we've been studying um, for Western Europe. So this will give us a good chance to make some really interesting comparisons between a civilization uh, in West Africa compared to civilizations in uh, Western Europe. Okay, now first things first, we are not studying all of Africa. We are studying just West Africa, which really, in terms of our focus, will be around this region right about here, which is probably a good thing for us given the amount of time that we have because, as you can see, Africa is a continent is actually huge. It's a lot of times misrepresented on maps or uh, globes in terms of its size, but it is absolutely massive. The United States is around 4 million square miles. West Af or excuse me, Africa, the continent, is nearly three times the size of that. You can see all of the U.S., most of Western Europe, India, China, all fit uh, in terms of their actual square mileage uh, inside the continent of Africa. So we're going to zero in on three great empires from this territory, uh, this part of Africa, uh, West Africa. Okay. So in addition to Africa as a continent being about 12 million square miles, the fact that it's so big also gives it one of the unique characteristics of having such a variety of vegetation throughout that continent. You have not only the biggest desert in the world, but you also have the Sahel. This is really important because the Sahel is where the West African empires that we're going to study actually exist. And that's the area just south of the desert where the first signs of life or the first signs of vegetation actually begin. This would be a very, very tough place to live because there's a little bit of vegetation. There's enough that you can survive on, um, but it's certainly not this plush, plentiful place um, like a savanna or a rainforest. And you can see by the time you span the southern part of the continent, you end up in another desert. It's huge. Okay, now for West Africa, what we really want to focus on early on is how that geography shapes their values. Think about your own life. Think about what you value. Think about how your thoughts might be different if you didn't have roads around. Think about what teams you might like athletically if you weren't where you are. Geography influences everything about us, what we think, how we feel, what we desire. And it's no different in the history of West Africa. They live in the Sahel, which is this tough place to live. It's this thin strip of just a little bit of grass. Here's the desert. Here's the savanna. Down here you would have the rainforest. We're focused on the Sahel, but because this is such a tough place to live and because the resources are so finite, it really influences everything about what the West Africans think and value and believe, starting with family. Perhaps nothing in West Africa was as valued as family because you had to be able to trust and count on each other. This was all you had, especially in the early part of West Africa's history. A civilization was no more than a nuclear family who had stuck together and, and bound together. So you had to be able to trust them, and that was everything to you. You would do anything for your family because of the area in which you lived. Going right along with that is loyalty. You had to be loyal to your family. You had to be able to be trusted. If you weren't loyal, your, your life was essentially over because if you couldn't be trusted, no one had any use for you in the Seho. If you, if you were someone who was going to lie or steal and affect your family's good name, they had no place for you there because everything came down to the smallest details in terms of their survival. Also, one of the early religions in West Africa was something called animism, and it's belief that all living things have spirits like in insects, trees, blades of grass, and it's important in terms of understanding the uh, West Africans' philosophies and, and their beliefs because they didn't have very much in terms of resources. So the things that they did have, they always wanted to make sure that they treated with respect. That's one of their early religious belief systems. Later on, Islam is going to spread to West Africa, and that's going to change a few things. But early on, they have this belief system, again, because of their geography. You start to see all the ways in which just their geography, just their environment is shaping how they feel and what they think. What they think excuse me. And then lastly, in terms of the resources that the West Africans valued, we value in the United States, we value cars and homes and certain clothing. West Africans, their most valuable resource, the thing that they had to have above all else, salt. Because salt would preserve their food 
and allow them to keep food around longer. Salted food could uh, last up to a year without spoiling. And in the Sahel, again, because of that environment, making sure that you had resources available were very, very important. All of these beliefs and values would have likely never been shaped in West Africa if it wasn't for the environment that they live within. So throughout our entire unit, as we get inside the heads of these great West African empires and these leaders, and we're trying to figure out what made them make the decisions that they did, don't lose sight of their geography and how that may have shaped what they thought, what they felt, and what they believed.